Rule number one of van life. Never make any promises. Never. It's not every day you see places wow. like this. Places like this, like this. Mm. Welcome to our channel. We're Andre and Lisa. Over the last 20 years, we have traveled together to more than 40 countries. Five years ago, we embarked on a long-term sabbatical and have been nomadic ever since. For most of the past two years, we have been exploring Western Europe with our motorhome. This year, we plan to make our way through Eastern Europe towards Denmark for summer. We'll be heading south for winter and just maybe make it to Morocco. So hit that subscribe button and join our adventure. Another perfect example of our life. We thought we'd wake up and go for a run this morning. Which we did. Which we did. Have breakfast. Which we didn't. Which we didn't. Have a shower. <laughs> Which we didn't. So this morning we woke up in Yuanina and there's a running race. Starting which we did not take part in. Starting in half an hour and they're closing all the roads. <laughs> We're about to close this road. As you can see, there's That's nobody perfect. on it. And the lady said, I think she said, that we've got a few minutes to get out and then they're going to close the road. Some water for us, look. And there is, grab some water. Grab some water. Uh, well, there's definitely something going to happen here very soon. So we're going to hit the road and make our way to our very exciting stop of Meteora. Yes, but. Why is there always a but? Why is there always a but? <laughs> Maybe we find a nice stop and we just stay there for the day on our way. That would be great. You never know. So let's just uh, get out of this town before they shut us in forever. So strange driving these deserted, deserted roads. Awesome. So it doesn't look like Meteora. What? This isn't the place. Uh -huh. Did we get lost? <laughs> Is that Meteora? Where's the monasteries? Uh, cheers. Okay. To ever changing plans. <laughs> uh, as we were chased away, chased away from our overnight stop in Ioannina, we, the first place we stopped at was actually a place we had marked and parked for night. We thought about coming to last night, which we should have. We just stopped here to have some breakfast and have a shower and it's actually so nice. Oh, it's a beautiful view. I'll fly the drone and show you what it looks like. It's just so beautiful and peaceful here. And we just had a look now to see what time the monasteries are open until on a Sunday in Meteora. Not Sunday, every day. Oh, that's right, every day. We thought we'll go there in the afternoon on a Sunday, maybe there won't be as many buses. And then we saw that the monasteries, well, the one that we want to visit, actually closes at 3 p.m., which mm -hmm. is... No, so no. some close at 4, some close at 3. We decided, why not just uh, stay here tonight? Oh, look at that view. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful sunset view from here. There's another poppy. There's a poppy. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning early, we're going to really early, really, really, not on and Lisa early, really early. We're going to hit the road, try and get to the top monastery parking before 8. They only open at 9.30, but then we can walk around a little bit and enjoy the morning and see how that goes. So we're going to have some snacks and get some work done and... Take it easy. It's Eesh. Sunday after all. Yeah. All right. It doesn't feel that hot. It is hot. It doesn't look like the sun's about to set. And the sun's not about to set. But it's quarter to seven. I think this is the, the wrong time zone to be in. <laughs> I don't really mind. Look, beautiful. Making some uh, supper tonight. Uh, we're going vegetarian. Mm. Risotto. Refined with green asparagus. I have green asparagus, but I prefer to keep it for breakfast because broccoli for breakfast doesn't quite work. And at the price of asparagus, you have to be stingy with them. Well, it's what is the time actually? Yo, it's almost eight o'clock. Mm. Good night. Cheers. Tomorrow, I promise.
We will go to Metora. Rule number one of our life. Never make any promises. Never. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Cheers. Cheers. Blink. Blink. Mm. I haven't done this in a while. I'm going to be uh, waking up too early. <laughs> I think that must be it. Definitely one of my favorite guys. Yeah, I love it. What? It's a throat. We're almost sunrise, people. Maybe. <laughs> it's 7, 7-ish, 7 a.m. We're leaving our nice little parking. That was a lovely little spot. Oh, Such a peaceful night. Quite just a spot I've slept in a while, eh? And then secondly, how do people without showers live in motorhomes? <laughs> least I feel fairly awake. I mean, being able to just wake up, have a quick shower and then fresh and ready to hit the road, it's good. As you can tell between us, this one's the morning person. <laughs> Not me. Uh, okay, we've got about 40 minutes drive. Meteora, so it will put us there on 8 ish, which will hopefully give us a chance, a decent chance, at a parking spot close to one of the top monasteries. And a good head start on the buses. Yeah, the monastery is only open at 9 30, so there's a good chance that there will be people, obviously, but I think maybe it won't be fully crowded yet. The first uh, 30 kilometers of Windy Road. No breakfast. <laughs> this beautiful man stop him so he can clean the window so we can get some better footage the things he won't do for you and for me I think we're early enough and we got ourselves a great parking and up there you can see one monastery over there and the other one over there right on the top of the hill way in the distance is the great monastery now they open at 9 30 so and this is the what's this one farlam i think we're gonna enjoy the coffee oh what a spot look at this place though isn't that amazing? Wow. Well, I have to say that from here, I thought we'd go to the main monastery, but this one looks really nice. Oof, this is quite precarious. I eh? think I want to go to this one. It looks much cuter. There's a hiking trail you can take. It comes up here from the bottom. They say they go about 40 minutes. I'm not sure if this is where it ends up. It looks <laughs> terrible. Hopefully not that. Maybe we'll go further up here and pop out there somewhere. Wow, that's really incredible. Never mind that. Look at this rock up here. It looks like a face. Oh, definitely worth waking up for. It's not every day you see places wow. like this. Places like this, like this. Mm. Mm. We have to walk up there. That's nice. It's only 8.30. It's another hour before the monastery open. So, you know, what are you going to do if you have some time? Make peanut butter cookies! Peanut butter chocolate cookies. That's no, actually peanut butter. It's peanut butter and banana chocolate and cookies. And and, and, oh. But just look at this crazy situation. Yeah, it's 20 minutes later, boom. 20 minutes later, we are surrounded. Then we got to walk up to the monastery. I'll show you from outside. Things have definitely escalated. There's Pumali already parked in. <laughs> and it's just packed with campers. 
Over there you can see the first two busloads have arrived. So we've decided to go into Varlam. No, because the Great Monasteries behind us might be more busy. This one's supposed to have amazing frescoes though, and it looks really beautiful from the outside. Yeah. Knock, knock. I think they're open. You what? Oh, yeah, and as the crowds are ascending, we're realizing, oops, we had a boo-boo. Uh, because we all dressed very properly. Lisa's got like super long pants. Even more floppy pants, pants mm. so that it's not tight pants. But you, they still want yeah. you to, women still need to wear a dress or a skirt. So either you need to bring your own dress or skirt or so wrong. And at this specific one, they want to sell you one. So. And oh. they're actually quite aware of it because they say, we're not like the others where they just give you one. Because normally they give you one at the door and you give it back as you leave again. Yeah. But mm. I'm starting to think this is going to get busy. I'm just looking at the throngs of people. No, this is hectic. Okay, wait. <laughs> Look at those. <laughs> okay, let's uh, walk while we talk. Guys, come over here. For reference, it's 9.30 on a Monday morning in the beginning of May. Hmm. I'm glad we're not here in the middle of the weekend in the tourist season. So yes, I'm very glad we woke up early and made this trek and had this whole place to ourselves for at least half an hour this morning, eh? <laughs> an hour. Yeah, amazing. Man, this is crazy. This is incredible. This place. Wow. Although we sometimes have to go see a few things, every time we visit places where, it's, where tourism is really big, we feel like that's not actually what we want to do. We want to be out in nature. We want to go find the smaller towns, slightly off the beaten path. And uh, we've received a bit of flack in the past referring to other tourists as tourists because we're tourists ourselves. Obviously, we're all complicit in visiting a place, but if we're putting a conscious effort into avoiding other tourism, we're not part of the problem. We're hopefully part of the solution. I think this year, people are going to travel full out. You know? Definitely. It's going to be intense. So. It's going to be a busy tourism year. Sounds I don't think anything can prepare you for this. You <sighs> just can't describe this to someone. The scale of it. Apparently, somewhere in the 6th century, there were some Orthodox hermit monks that stayed in caves and crevices and once a week they sort of met. It was only later on, a few centuries later, where so they started constructing these monasteries. And there used to be 24, now there's six left, of which four are male and two are female, and the average inhabitants per monastery is 10 people. Now, in the past, they had to climb up by ropes. Interesting story. They say that anybody was welcome to climb up by ladder and it would be divine intervention if the ladder so happened to break and your life was ended. No man, that's not how it goes. <laughs> so they only replaced the ropes that they used to hoist uh, people and goods up once it breaks. You don't replace it preventatively, it'll break when it's time. When there's divine <laughs> intervention. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, oh, baby, gosh. Oops. Oops. Enjoy the view, fall on your face. <laughs> so behind us is the, the big monastery. Now this is the biggest and most popular. It also has a massive collection of manuscripts, apparently. But it's not half as pretty as that one. Uh, maybe it's just the angle we're seeing it at because it doesn't look so precariously poised on the rock. From the other side, it looks mm -hmm. much nicer. But it's incredible. I mean, it's extraordinary. Dancer. Okay, I want a cookie. Cookie time. Freshly baked uh, banana. Oh, it's quite warm, eh? It really is quite warm. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh it's these guys are good. It says no pantaloons. Oh gosh, no slacks or pantaloons. <gasps> On your head. Oh, oh, this is quite cool. Whoa. <gasps> this is really beautiful. What's your step here, Eva? Oh, yeah, definitely you have to watch your steps. <laughs> okay, inside the great monastery. Three mm -hmm. euros per person to enter, and we get a little. This is a little dress. We drove up here this morning. This is a little town of Kastraki. There's a few campsites actually that's appropriate for camper van accommodation overnight. Very highly recommended on park for night as well. And it's around 22 euros a night with all services and electric hookup. 
from here, you get a beautiful view. Wow. Over this fantastic, incredible rock formation. It's all this just come out of nowhere on this green plateau. So crazy. Even though there's loads of people, you can still escape the crowds a little bit. There's some areas of solitude and there's lots of little museums to see. Wow, quite a lot for your three euros worth. We're going to go back to Van Rijk breakfast before the rains come. Look at those clouds. The idea was to leave here and to head to Liti Choro, which is a very quaint little village just below Mount Olympus. But, but that is what the weather looks like in Liti Choro. It's pouring with rain and it's doing that for the next three days. Change of plans. From there we were supposed to head towards the coast and from there to Thessalonica. It looks like Mount Olympus is definitely gathering all the rain in Greece. And instead we're going to go north and maybe go to Edessa, the city of water. Halfway stop first. Halfway, what happens halfway? No, we're first going to just go pause for the day. Okay. And tomorrow we'll hopefully make our way to Edessa. Well, we, we know it's going to rain tomorrow morning. Now, I don't know if it's the smartest thing to stop in the field like this. <laughs> Your idea. My idea. I'll take the wrap. But this is a like a little archaeological site of some sort. I don't know what it is. It overlooks the river on that side. It's beautiful. It's made, being made available by the municipality. It's actually showers and toilets and everything. It's just so awesome. He's already met some people. I don't know what they're all about, but they're very friendly. Uh, it's sort of afternoonish. We're going to relax here for the rest of the day. I think, think we're going to move. Lisa said she wants to still go to Thessaloniki today. Not far. Three hour drive. Three hour drive to Thessaloniki? No. Well, we're going to pick a direction from here now. Are you going to look at the weather? Let's go to Greece, she said. It's going to be fun, she said. <laughs> we had hoped to be able to see a little bit more of Greece, even though we only had limited time. I think we have to just look at the weather and go where it's the driest. Change of plan. Instead of heading towards... I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to say. I don't want to say. You don't want to say because no. it's going to change again. We still have 24 hours before we drive. I don't want to say. So... Oh, the sun's going out. Oh, that's good. <laughs> good. That's what you got locked in. Cool. People are probably wondering why we don't have diabetes <laughs> or why we're not super obese by now. Because every time we film, we stuff something bad in our mouths. We promise we generally eat very healthy. Off camera. <laughs> promise. Okay, just before we have our enjoy our coffee in the rain. We've changed plans. I'm, I'm so hesitant to say what we're going to plan, but I think the weather for the next couple of days will rain us. We're scratching Thessaloniki, we're scratching Mount, Mount Olympus. Olympus. We're scratching Edessa waterfalls, everything. In fact, we're even scratching our next country, Bulgaria, no, for no, now. No, yeah, just temporary. We're going to do a little detour. I think we're going to head straight north from where we're now and push into North Macedonia. Uh, hopefully, we're going to find a little bit we better weather there, but we're still going to Bulgaria. We're just going to do a little bit detour. North Macedonia first. We've got to follow the good weather, and we'll just take it from there. We were absolutely blown away with the very, very small parts mm. of Greece that we did get to see, and we will be back to see more. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Make sure your notifications are on. Please leave us a comment. Maybe leave us some suggestions for when we do come to Greece next time. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Can't remember how to say goodbye. Alimera. Calimera is good, good day. I think it's good day. Calimera, Greece. Calispera. Calispera? That's afternoon. I thought that's something to do with um, asparagus. <laughs> Efkaristo, Greece. Until next time.